as a chief guest uh, for this inaugural session we are privileged to have with us mr sunil dahia executive vice president vadhwani opportunity initiative at vadhwani foundation i take this opportunity to introduce sunil dahia sir he is an honors in economics from delhi university he undertook multi initiatives at niit such as contributed uh, to building industry connects for placing near about 2000 uh, 2000 plus students co-founded a new business venture stackroot led to b2c digital transformation series he has a vast experience of 25 years in vocational training presently sunil dahia sir leads the Vadhwani Opportunity Program in Asia and is expanding its footprint in emerging economies. Sir will enlighten us with his keynote address on the topics from a pedagogy angle, how important is curriculum and methodology, and how NEP is embracing the new age pedagogy models. Welcome, sir. We are honored to have you on this occasion. I request you to present your keynote address. Thank you so much. and uh, it's it's my privilege you know to be on this call uh, uh, honestly you know to be part of such a gathering where we have uh, uh, you know the entire college of college of engineering and uh, the whole uh, uh, dignitaries uh, the academicians on the call and and the and i must specifically thank the college of engineering of a woman pune for giving me this opportunity so i i would just like to keep this into uh, divide this into two parts so there was one part is uh, what's happening on the uh, nep side and somewhere related to the pedagogy side and then uh, in the second part of the conversation would like to talk about uh, the pedagogy models evolving into hutagogy and then going further into into areas of adaptive learning so so i'll i'll try to keep it on on these two parts the first part which i wanted to share with all of you and you will be actually and i'm sure <clears throat> this fraternity would be uh, you know you must be already uh, you know much advanced than maybe my own knowledge but i as part of the think tank working with the government on on the new education policy uh, the whole approach of a change in the way of learning right at the school level is completely redefining the system so so just to give you an example uh, uh the first pilot on nep you know which is right now happening in different parts of the country and just to give you an example is imagine uh, gone are the days when there are classrooms and there are teachers in the classroom and and if we just imagine it like this uh, let's say we are talking to a sixth standard grade 6 or a grade 7 classroom in school going up to grade 12 and then imagine that all the subject teachers are in the same room and all the students of that standard are in the same room so in other words there are we are gone with the sections and all students together in the same room now imagine that uh, a history teacher and or rather a social studies teacher and a physics teacher and an english <coughs> language teacher and geography and you know all all possible subjects and now imagine if they start a topic of uh, uh let's say two wheeler now uh, the the aspect starts from the history teacher talking about the two wheeler aspect and then somewhere the science teacher talking about some some aspect of wheel some ap- aspects of engine and then there are uh, you know there are other teachers which are talking about maybe a, maybe a political science teacher talks about the policies launched by the government and now imagine the same group of students having to do these case studies in a classroom one team picked up for almost 2 to 3 months and maybe in a year they go through two or three such teams and and so and imagine when they come to the class 12 grade 12 uh, now the uh, the case study in front of them is how to build a four stroke engine and again all 12 standard students are together and all subject teachers around and and including the political science teacher including the sales teacher including the product part so what is going to what is getting tested now is an absolutely uh, applied learning so in other words how does the concept and how does various uh, various subject matters come together now when i'm talking about this uh, you know you you might feel uh, 
you know uh, this is all together a, a very very different approach uh, to the complete way of learning which we have in school today so this aspect when when we are uh, i'm very delighted to sh- share with you that uh, you know some pilot schools they are there is lot of excitement around this and uh, of course uh, the whole setup of this of the entire system changes uh, students get to hear a, on the same uh, theme different approaches approaches from different subject matters so so that aspect is a kind of a cohesive learning but completely advanced uh, completely application based and absolutely a kind of a hands on kind of learning as we proceed further now this is maybe in very early stage but i just wanted to share with you on on what looks to be the game changing stuff when it comes to the way the students learn at the schools itself and then imagine if they move to the higher education and then further move into into the uh, into the work space or industry so with with this background things would be uh, would are bound to be shaping up differently as we as we see these students passing through this journey so this was the this was the first part which i just wanted to share with all of you the second part is the evolving pedagogy models and uh, whether it was andragogy and then the pedagogy and now we are talking more about uh, look at it from a uh, you, we are we are hearing this term on tutagogy and then uh, various things which are evolving around uh, one tutagogy and two adaptive learning i'm i'm attaching the adaptive learning component because uh, somewhere this goes hands in hand in hand as we proceed further Uh, and this is uh, you know we work as foundation we work in nearly 22 countries and when we work with this education uh, fraternity all around these 22 countries uh, there are lots of learnings from each other and and of course and and that's what i just wanted to share so uh, coming on to the first part of of this topic which is to do with hutagogy now hutagogy is 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 more uh, i'm sure all of you know that it is more to do with with student in control of learning Uh, uh so rather than uh, so from a from a trainer centric model to a student centric model but when i say student centric model this doesn't truly mean uh, uh student centric in 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 a uh, in a simple terms if we answer the following questions is the student part of making the curriculum if that is yes automatically you know that's the sh- shift towards hutagogy is the curriculum flexible enough to incorporate the latest changes around so is 25% of the curriculum uh, very flexible that kind of stuff then that moves into into hutagogy can three students learn the same concept differently in the same class uh, so in other words maybe i uh, my learning pattern seems to be more visual was another another student's learning pattern in the in the higher education could be more textual and there could be third one whose more pattern is to learn through uh, audio patterns now uh, or there could be a fifth pattern you know somebody just loves to learn a concept by only research and that's the way of learning so can our learning uh, pedagogy models uh, get on to hutagogy kind of stuff and where a learner has got, learns the best way he or she can learn so that's these are the 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 facets uh, from a from a learner standpoint from an academician standpoint from the institution the esteemed uh, institutions uh, uh, you know uh, where all of you come from from their standpoint it is more like how does uh, you know how do we come up with a vibrant curriculum system where the trainer or the or the professor plays the role of enabling resources for students to learn and the whole uh, the entire ecosystem works on uh, this curriculum is having the foundation and the basis which is important but then it has students intervention on designing of curriculum it has flexibility to to change something at the last minute because maybe suddenly let's say on engineering maybe if electric vehicles are are gaining momentum can the can that piece be quickly turn around and that can be added quickly so so this is the part which i i thought uh, i must share with you on on the hutagogy stand uh, who, who hutagogy side and 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 towards the end i would just like to also talk about uh, aspect of uh, adaptive learning 
now this adaptive learning models are emerging now in in various parts uh, we are seeing it in in the in the west and slowly you know there are the models are emerging uh, you know in our side as well and there's lo- a lot of research happening in this area which is uh, uh, how can we uh, how can we uh, suggest the best mode of learning depending on the pattern of learning the user is inclined to so uh, so how do we know that this student coming from this socio economic background would be open to what kind of learning pattern so is there a way uh, uh, through technology where uh, if a demographic stuff and learning uh, behaviors and patterns are fed into a, a big data kind of uh, environment with artificial intelligence applied on it so how we can categorize within this classroom <coughs> or maybe maybe uh, even in synchronous and asynchronous model how can we categorize students on their way of learning what is the best way they learn the same topic and can that variety uh, be completely uh, from a trainer standpoint or from a professor or or let's say the leader the or, or the uh, let's say the trainer in the classroom how can this this individual get all the possible resources to the students may not be a of course subject matter expertise is always it is there it will always going to be there and it will always go forward but can we get in the uh, the resources in different formats somebody wants to do it in 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 you know absolutely digital format someone else wants to do it completely on audio with this very less mix of text there's a third one who just wants to do exploratory learning nothing to do with you know and that's the best way the person picks up so a combination of all this uh, the solution seems seems to be the adaptive learning models as as they get slowly evolved and one last piece before i close is the uh, and this happened this is just 3 days back when we were talking to an organization uh and there and this is a kind of a disruptive i would not not call it disruptive but very uh, uh let's say today most of our students are now used to uh, synchronous and asynchronous model of learning now when it comes to technology enabled learning uh what are the uh, how can we make their engagement uh how can we take their engagement to a very different level uh example they might be learning any subject anywhere but the point is how do you get them into a community learning a vibrant community learning model now if that can happen then this is again uh, a one more form of adaptive learning but that is now uh, we are seeing lot of trends where this is emerging that student might be learning a topic but let's say competitions activities blogs forums and making them work as a community and bringing out the best of their soft skills forward so that's the uh, you know these were you know three or four points which i thought i must share with uh, uh, and this is what you know what we are going through and uh, i just thought let me share with all of you and thank you very much for giving me this opportunity and you know love to uh, love to always contribute and whichever way we can we are a global foundation and we are a philanthropic organization we work across Uh, 22 countries driving the agenda on skilling education and entrepreneurship uh, in the, in these countries india being the largest and frankly uh, you know, we're very glad to be sharing this part with you thank you so much <laughs>